Hey everybody, and thanks so much for tuning in to this week's yoga video. Today, I'm excited to share a yin yoga video. Yin is awesome because it's excellent for improving flexibility, and it's really good for quieting the mind, and excellent as a stress reliever as well. This video is brought to you by the Fountain of Juice, who sent me their line of juices. So the Fountain of Juice is, first of all, an awesome name for a juice company, but it's a great company that I love because they make 100% completely raw, cold-pressed juice and milks, clean, simple recipes to maximize nutrient and enzyme density. There are no crazy concoctions and no preservatives or additives ever used. It's no HPP, which means that they don't heat, process, or treat their product, and that ensures that you get the most nutrients. They blast, chill, store, and ship the product frozen to ensure quality and preserve nutritional benefits. The bulk of their produce is stored locally from farms in their region in Pennsylvania, and everything is prepped, produced, and bottled in their central kitchen. For more, visit thefountainofjuice.com. Okay, so for this practice, you're going to need a couple props. I'm using a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you could use a couch cushion or you could roll up a really thick blanket or a really thick beach towel or a couple towels together, roll them up. Just get kind of creative and use what you have. The other thing I'm gonna use are these two yoga blocks. Mine are foam, but you could use whatever you have at home. And if you don't have yoga blocks, just get creative and use something similar, a really thick book, um, a couple old VHS videos, do you remember those? <laughs> those will work as well. When you're ready, have a seat on your mat and let's get started. So I'd like to start by just setting the bolster aside, taking one yoga block and just placing it underneath your sitting bone. So I don't want you to sit all the way on the block, like if this is your block, I just want you to sit right at the very edge where your sitting bones are right here so that it'll tip your pelvis forward and you'll be able to have a little bit more space and feel a little bit more comfortable in this seated position here. Roll your shoulders back and bring your hands down to your legs, palms facing up, and then go ahead and close your eyes. And then take a deep breath in through your nose, filling up your lungs with as much air as you possibly can. And then exhale through your mouth with a sigh, go <sighs> Really like make that noise. I know it sounds weird, especially if like you're in your home doing this alone, but it really does feel good and it's a great stress reliever. So another deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs up and then exhale through your mouth and go <sighs> Just letting go of any stress you're carrying around with you. And we'll do that one last time. Deep breath in through the nose, filling up your lungs. And exhale through your mouth with a sigh, go just letting go of all of your stress and anything you're dealing with in your life off the mat. And then close your mouth but part your teeth and begin to breathe in and out through your nose, noticing that when you do that, on the inhale your belly expands and on the exhale your belly button draws in towards your spine. As you inhale, notice that you lengthen up through your spine, and as you exhale, feel your shoulders melt away from your ears. And then on your next inhale, see if you can tilt your head back so that your, pel or your chin is parallel to the ground. And take a moment now to set an intention for your practice today. An intention is just a positive, short statement to kind of help you keep yourself on track and set a, like a dedication for your practice. And then when you're ready, bring your hands to your heart and just take a moment to acknowledge your practice and your commitment to practice. And then when you're ready, Quietly open up your eyes, slide that block out from underneath of you, 
and bring it to the side of your mat along with the other one on the other side. We're going to stretch the legs out in front of us. And then from here, I want you to go ahead and grab hold of that bolster and bring it in line with the base of your spine. Sit nice and tall and then press that bolster back maybe six inches, six to eight inches, and then send your upper body back, just kind of melting over it. And turn your palms to face up. This is just a really gentle chest opener. So especially good for people who are very tight through the chest. Most often this is men, um, just because, I don't know why, men are often very tight in the chest and in the hips. And Olympic weightlifters, and people who are, work at a desk all day, often because of their posture, or people who drive a lot, again, because of the posture. So roll your shoulders back, let your arms be really heavy, and then go ahead and close your eyes. We're going to be in each pose for about five minutes. So let yourself totally relax here. Let your breathing be natural. Let your eyes sink into the sockets. And I'll let you know when five minutes is up.
Okay, gently open up your eyes. You're gonna press your hands down into the mat to sit yourself up. And from here, we're gonna bend the knees and bring the bottoms of the feet to touch in Supta Baddha Konasana or Baddha Konasana, and then we're gonna turn it into a Supta in a second. So, with your blocks, you can place them on the flat side if you're a little bit more open through the hips. If your inner thighs are very tight, you can set the block like this. If they're very, very tight, you can set them like this. And there's no shame in how tight your hips are. Like, who, who really cares? Everybody has to start somewhere, so if you're very tight, just let wherever you are be enough, because it, it totally is enough. Okay, so we're opening up the hips like this. Now, if you're very, very open, you may not even need blocks, but it does feel nice to have something there, and then you can just totally relax. From here, you have the option to choose whether you're gonna keep the bolster like this, or if you need a deeper stretch through your chest, you can prop your bolster up on its side if it's a rectangular bolster. If it's a circular bolster, well then you just have one size. <laughs> That's just gonna have to do. Um, bring your bolster again to the base of your spine and then press it out away from you a couple inches and then just lie yourself over top. And let your head be heavy, let your arms come down to the side, palms facing up, and let your legs be very heavy here. So this pose should be very effortless, like no effort involved at all. And then when you're comfortable, close your eyes and let your eyes sink into the sockets. Just scan your body from your head to your toes here, seeing where you can let go a bit more. Where are you holding on to tension? And bring your awareness to your arms. See if you can make your arms heavier. And then take a deep breath in through your nose. And as you exhale, see if you can feel the pull of gravity opening up any tight areas that you're dealing with. And then as you begin to settle into this pose, go ahead and Close your mouth, begin to breathe in and out through your nose. And again, we're going to be here for about five minutes. And I'll let you know when the five minutes are up.
From here, quietly open up your eyes. Turn your hands to face down onto the mat and gently press into your hands to lift up. Come in to sit nice and tall. And once you get here, bring your hands underneath your knees, press your knees together, and then extend your legs. I want to have your legs a little bit wider than hip distance. And then we'll go ahead and take the bolster and bring it out in front of you. I'm propping mine up on its side. We're gonna come into caterpillar pose, which is like a very passive forward fold. It feels really nice on the back. So we're gonna need to kind of stack some stuff up so that we can lay heavy over top. If you need to, you can use towels, um, blocks, bolster, blankets, whatever you need to do, pillows to kind of get as tall as you need to get with your props so that you can melt your upper body over. If you're very um, flexible through your hips and through your back, then you probably don't need much. This will probably do it. But if you're very tight through your back and through the backs of your legs, then you're probably gonna wanna maybe pause this video, grab some more props, or just see what happens when you get creative with stacking your blocks. So that's what I'm gonna do just to show you how it, I think it can be done with just these three pop props. So your bolster stacked high, your um, block is stacked like this, the tall way, and then the other one is stacked on top of it like a T. From here, you can bring your hands over top of it and just rest your forehead right on the block. And this actually feels very good for me. But because I'm a little bit more open, I'm gonna stack the blocks like this, bring my hands down, and just rest my head on my arms. Find a position that feels comfortable to you. You really do need to feel comfortable in this. You don't want to have any tension or ever, any sensation of like <gasps> feeling uncomfortable. So get comfortable. And then we're going to be here for about five minutes. So settle in, close your eyes. And begin to connect with your breath once again. And one more time, we'll be here for five minutes. I'll let you know when that's up.
And when you're ready, go ahead and sit up. Remove the blocks and place them out to the side. And then set the bolster down away from you. We're not gonna use it for this pose. We're gonna do a supported bridge. So come to lie down on your back and take your block and then press into your feet to lift up your hips and bring your block just underneath the very top of your hips. So you may need to play around with the positioning. Again, you wanna feel comfortable, you wanna feel good here. And then you have a couple options. You can keep your legs as they are, or you can take your feet a little bit wider and just let your knees droop in. Whatever feels good for you, do that. With your hands, you can have hands on the belly, hands down on the ground, palms facing up, whatever feels best for you, go ahead and do that. Once you're in the position, close your eyes, let your eyes sink into the sockets, and then scan your head from your head to your toes, sorry, scan your body from your head to your toes, and just check in and see where you can let go a little bit more. The tendency here is to kind of keep a lift through the hips. See if you can totally relax your hips. Let the hips be very heavy and let the block fully support you. So once again, this is a pretty much effortless pose. And again, we're gonna be here for about five minutes and I'll let you know when that five minutes is up.
When you're ready, quietly open up your eyes and then heel toe your feet until they feel like they are hip distance. Then place both feet firmly on the ground and begin to press into the feet. And as you do that, your hips are gonna lift ever so slightly and you can reach underneath and slide the block out from underneath you. And bring your legs down or your hips down and lift your knees, pulling them into your chest just for a gentle counter stretch here. And we're gonna end with a supported Shavasana. So to do that, we're gonna grab the bolster and send it underneath your knees. So your legs will just melt over top and you'll come to lie down in Shavasana. When the bolster is underneath your knees, it aids in, in preventing any low back issues while you lie here. Because sometimes just regular Shavasana can be kind of taxing on your low back. So really, anytime you're doing a Shavasana, you should have the freedom to roll up a blanket or a towel or prop a um, bolster underneath your knees just to take off some pressure from the low back. When you're ready, get comfortable here. Bring your hands either to your belly or off the mat, palms facing up, or one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly, whatever feels best for you, whatever you need in this moment, go ahead and do that. And then close your eyes. See if you can relax the space between your eyebrows. See if you can close your mouth, but keep your jaw open so your teeth are apart to kind of relax the jaw. And then let your tongue sink into your mouth. Tuck your chin ever so slightly for a long neck. And then go through your body and, and just kind of find out where you're holding on to tension in your upper back, in your hips, in your legs. And see if you can use your breath like a laser to zap that tension and just melt it away. And then when you're ready, we'll come into Shavasana here. We're going to be here for about five minutes. And I'll let you know when the five minutes is up.
Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes and slowly make your way over onto your right side. You can cradle your head in your right arm. When you're ready, press your left hand into the ground to sit up into a comfortable seated position. And bring your hands to your heart. Just taking a moment to acknowledge your health and feeling thankful for your commitment to practice and for all the good things you have in your life. And when you're ready, seal in your practice with Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today for this yin practice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please let your friends know about this um, yoga channel if you've been enjoying it. I try to post new videos every Tuesday. Sometimes I do Monday or Wednesday, but usually the beginning of the week is when you can expect them. We also have an app. It's called the Yoga by Candice official app. All you have to do to find it is search Yoga by Candice without any spaces in your app store, and it's available for Google Play and iTunes or iOS. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to be in touch. And uh, thank you for practicing with me and I will see you soon.